Hola, audiencia, y bienvenidos a Hoy Dímelo Cinema Club. I am your host, Jason Ishmael Echols, and I am joined by our illustrious panel of co-hosts, Don Dino Spazzini. We are joined by El Profesor, Andrea and Steve, and Vero. So tonight, we're going to be reviewing the uh, the Ingrid, Ingrid Bergman the Ing Ingmar Ingmar Bergman. I picked this movie, by the way. The Ing Ingmar Bergman film, Summer with Monica. Um, it's a black and white film. It came out in 1953, and I thought it was very important that we get a woman's perspective. So let me just give a quick shout out to uh, Vito and Andrea for joining us. Uh, I didn't think it was right for a bunch of dudes to be reviewing this movie because uh, there's some themes in this that I felt was very important to get lady perspective. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right into first impressions. Um, Dino, why don't you start us off, give us your first impression of Summer with Monica. Yeah, all the men are gonna talk first, right? Sure, <laughs> whatever you want, buddy. I thought, oh man, it was a super interesting movie. Uh, first time watching the movie. Uh, I don't. I hadn't even heard of this movie before. It had some amazing shots. Like, that was the first thing I noticed. Like, there was the banisters by, like, and, and he would he would have the shots, like, in between framed uh, scenery. So, like, between hallways or in between the shelves where dude was working, you know, with the, even the glassware on there. So that, to me, from the get-go, was really cool to watch. Like... They had a chimney stack, like, dead center. Like, it was just using Stockholm, because I believe that's where it was filmed, at, like, just really showing the the 50s of, of Stockholm. So that was the very first thing. And, boy, I knew she was trouble the minute she goes and tries to get a match from, a, from him and how she was. I was like, oh, I don't think this is going to end well. But um, it was really cool. It was cool seeing her kind of like, this is what I want. I'm sick of this. I don't like getting beat. I, I just want to kind of be free. It was kind of just like this almost like rebel without a cause or just like the young generation trying to find themselves. So, yeah, I so many things that, that I, I imagine we'll, we'll get into. But kind of first impression, just the cinematography and, and how uh, he had the camera position was superb. All right, very cool. Um, El Profesor, why don't you take it away and give us your first impression? I would have called this movie I Survived My Summer with Monica or, you know, uh, all I know is I don't want to spend my summer with Monica. Um, for, for me, this movie was interesting. There's definitely things I very much thought that were really cool choices in the movie, but I think overall... I don't know this is a movie I'm going to watch like 10 times. Uh, for me, it was a, it was like a journey through people and acting. I felt like through the movie progressively got better. I felt like at the beginning of the movie, I wasn't really buying into people, but as I went through the movie, I started to like them more and more. And like, even the acting seemed to change. Um, but I think he makes a lot of choices. I'm sure we'll talk about later on with like the waves and like all of a sudden, like the life is becoming a storm for them. Um, and that obviously the fa most famous shot of her face um, I think he made some amazing choices. I just don't know. I think there's some things that we should talk about that he might have had difficulty when putting this together. Awesome. Awesome. Um, why don't we do Steve, Andrea, Vito, and then I'll finish it off. Okay, doke. She says Steve, so you kept to your promise. The man go first. Um, <laughs> well, no, what, a gentleman. what a gentleman. Uh, so uh, first impressions, first time watching this movie uh would have never ever ever crossed my radar if it wasn't for cinema club uh and it was an interesting watch and honestly i think it was more enjoyable of course i haven't watched it by myself but it was definitely more enjoyable seeing it with someone than seeing it by myself i think uh first time watching it uh i do agree with what a professor said that the acting did get progressively better as like the time went by uh i honestly there were two scenes that i just they were honestly 
making my brain like rattle. <laughs> my ADD person inside wanted to just throw a rock to the TV. And that was the two boat scenes <laughs> that lasted an eternity. <laughs> There were other boat scenes that they were quick, fade in, fade out, quick. Yeah. But there were two boat scenes that were at least three minutes. Like, I was just like, yo, I get it. It's the 50s. To them, that was glorious at the time. But, man, three minutes of just a boat, go like, that was a lot. They, they rented those done. boats for the whole day, man. That was my only complaint. Uh, but yeah, first impressions that, uh, I'm gonna pass it to. Well, I just wanted my first impression. I just wanted to know why the movie was chosen in the first place. Cause it has certain themes and I want to see what was the inspiration to choose this film. Yeah. And I'll, why I'll, you I'll, wanted to see like a female perspective on it specifically. Yeah, I'll get into that, um, I guess, after Vidal gives her first impression. Okay. Uh, this movie was so raw, and I was very excited to see it because the 1953s, it was such a completely different era, and it's such a different culture as well. Uh, that I, I know Americans always they always want a happy ending. And I was very intrigued to see this and how it was gonna develop. Um, it's very visual. They just talk for exactly specific things. They just don't really talk about like their surroundings. All of that is just by the camera, it's taken by the camera. And it is long too, the scenes, but you know, you just need to uh, soak it in. Uh, it's so different. It's from the 50s, so they would take their time. Now we're trying to like push everything in movies. Back then, they took their time with this movie. Um, but yeah, very raw and uh, unpredictable. Yeah, I would uh, actually second that. It is uh, it is very unpredictable. So the reason I chose this movie uh, as the Cinema Club. Um, mainstayers know I, I never pick a movie for cinema club that i've ever seen before and this film has been on my uh, long list for a really long time because it's in time magazine's 1001 films you must see before you die list wow. so as i start to work down that list i usually pick a movie from that list for cinema club it's summertime and i thought what better movie to pick than a film with summer in the title that was it <laughs> that was the entire inspiration um, I'm glad I picked this movie, though, because I feel like I had to talk to somebody about this because this film left me feeling some kind of way. Um, I was I was terrorized by Monica. <laughs> to be honest with you, it felt Makes like sense. it felt like every bad relationship I never wanted to be in. <laughs> um, but then it, it starts off very like romantic, like, oh, wow, like you, you meet this chick who kind of finds she kind of found him. She sort of forced her way into his life a little bit. And she's sort of like, Monica has like this power in the film to sort of get what she wants when she wants it. And she doesn't care like how anybody else feels about it. You know, like Monica was like smoking cigarettes in the bed at her parents' house first thing when she woke up. And I'm like, man, like she is a, she's a badass. Like she's not messing around. And I thought the actress that played Monica was really good. Um, the film is kind of slow. The, the scenes uh, that you're talking about specifically, Steve, on that boat, I didn't mind that slowness so much because they're so pretty to look at. Like, it's shot so well, and I, I really like watching them on the lake. And it, it felt like like the slowness of summertime of, like, two kids falling in love. And it was like, I sort of, for me, I sort of needed to see that because it kind of felt like a little bit of it sort of felt like the director might have been telling a story that was pretty close to him. Like, maybe this happened to him. And that's why he's telling this story. I don't know that. I didn't investigate it. But it felt like while they're sort of, you know, uh, falling in love and um, what's the word? Like, consummating. I sort of just felt like I was a fly on the wall. Like, I was sort of on that little tiny boat with them. And also, like, Monica, Monica was really okay with just, like, 
not telling anybody where she was and just living on this boat with this dude all summer long. She was like a wild child. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I, uh, because of like Monica getting pregnant, this is why I wanted like women involved because I think Monica's a, Monica's a bad person. And I almost feel like Monica's the type of girl that put a hole in the condom. Now they probably weren't using condoms in Stockholm in 1953. But that's how I feel Monica was doing. And I felt like she was that kind of person. Um, so yeah, that's my first impression of the film. So let's get let's get like into the act. Wait, 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 wait. Did yeah. they use condoms in the 50s? And that's no, what I'm they saying. Didn't. They probably didn't. I think I thought for someone, no, he was alive. <laughs> They they already they did have it. Did they, did they use that much plastic back then? I don't think no. condom was created. I don't think they listen. Monica, That's why there's so many humans now. Monica was probably not letting them use a condom. Let's be honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, I think that she was very rebel, daredevil, dreamy type of girl because her upbringing itself was terrorizing. Yeah. Their parents were loving each other, and then seconds later, she's getting beat. And then the daddy's apologizing to her. So being 18, if you don't remember, your hormones, your pheromones are going crazy. Mm-hmm. And you start to daydream. And I bet she would look at their parents, too, and be like, oh, they're in love. But then you would act stupid. And then I know she wanted to just create that happiness for herself. So I think she was just careless. I think she didn't really care. And... Harry looked very virgin. Like Naive. he did not know how to handle anything. So mm-hmm. he would just do he anything. Like, he would just do the whole process instead of like thinking and be like, I can get her pregnant. Yeah. So no, she was crazy. She was creating stability, but uh, what you were saying, Vero, it's like her li- her livelihood was unstable, was crazy, abusive. So she was craving stability elsewhere. She saw this guy that was a nice, seemingly nice guy, and was able to like leave everything for her. So she would she thought she was gonna be taken care of, and had this expectations that she was gonna be a stay at home home mom and and like carry this child. I don't know where. Like I, I, she was young and naive but also also that's another thing like one thing is like wishing for that because like even earlier earlier in the film she's like oh look at that building and people have nice things like she just had that Mm -hmm. fantasy of like that's what i want Mm -hmm. and then when you finally have it like you're getting married you're like you have a child you have all this stuff and now you don't even want it Mm -hmm. you're like Yo, I'm I'm glad that you're the auntie's gonna take care of the kid. Is I don't want this, you know? Because like, it's not what she expected. It's also, she expected. plus pardon depression is a real thing. Yeah. And her not dealing with her own things, getting attacked, harassed at work, and her just like brushing it off and not really crying through the process of it. How is she gonna take that out? Like the last drop has to be is gonna tilt the whole glass. She had to like explode somehow and she went into the old habits. I feel like she went into the same thing, vicious cycle that she felt comfortable with even though she wasn't comfortable, but she needed to create her own happiness. And with the depression after having the kid as well, a lot of women, they don't want their kids after like, Mm -hmm. it's a real thing. It's like, I don't, it's not my kid. I don't wanna take care of it. And she was 18 too. She was like psychologically damaged. I, that's what I saw, and that's why it was like extremely raw. And I love the way that it finished because, yeah, that's life. Is what it happens, and it needs to be told. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think that's an interesting perspective. I didn't really see it from that angle, but that is an interesting perspective. In movies in 1953, didn't really do this, you know. And it doesn't really explore the idea of postpartum uh, depression. Or depression in general. Or or depression in general. But when you mention it, it is kind of there. It is kind of there. Because Harry even talks about his dad, the fact that his mom died when he was so young. And he was like, after that, my dad changed. He started acting weird. So even, even Harry's dad losing his wife, like completely got changed by that. Um, so I can see, yeah, there's definitely some, 
some stuff that people were not talking about. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and, and then, I mean, who knows what they were talking about in Stockholm? I mean, I don't know if Europe was, like, more free to, like... Stockholm Syndrome wasn't quite yet a thing, but yeah. that's that's what I was thinking when she's like, and we'll get married, and we'll do this, and that. I was like, oh, he's... he's... Okay, here's a question for you guys. And I'm not trying to be brash, but was Monica a hoe? <laughs> I I think she was a cheater. She definitely cheated. She wasn't a good person. I th- I, I agree with her. Like she didn't make good decisions. Like she, it, they, but she was a victim of her circumstances and the abuse, the household she was living in. So she was replicate. She was not stable to like manage a a monogamous relationship with this guy, and she self sabotaged. Like she was a cheater. I don't know if she was a hoe. <laughs> Maybe uh, I wouldn't judge. She her doesn't that. say she just got whole definition is being with a lot of guys. She yeah. didn't say that she was with a lot of guys. Did she say yeah? So that's what I'm getting at. Early <laughs> on in the movie, early on in the film, like in the first act, one of the guys she that she works with she was, was like. He said, like, you hoes. Well, he didn't say hoes. He didn't say hoes. <laughs> he said, like, something like, yeah, you girls messing around with all like, these guys or whatever. Yeah, but that couldn't be chauvinist, misogynist. I didn't know. But, I didn't but, know. But, okay. He said it, but then she sort of became that thing. So I'm like, maybe it was true. No, 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 no. I thought you were going to mention that the guy was like, hey, you came out with me last time. Let's kind of go out again. <laughs> And then there was the dude, and this is a question, there was a dude by her house that then ended up sucker punching, and he was like, come out with me again. So, like, she was going on dates. Whether or not that is whole activity, uh, you know. <laughs> well, she was going. Like, it's not, you know, but why was she doing that, you know, right. when she had the perfect life? But, but going it took out. her, something happened that took her there. And you know what? The kid was crying a lot, too which the brothers growing up were crying a lot. Remember? She was like, shut up. Yeah. So well, she was also drinking and smoking while pregnant, you know? So that, listen, that's smoking. Listen, I can't really say if she was a hoe or not, but for the 1950s, a hoe. <laughs> and there's <laughs> no brother. cell phone, there's no Tinder, you know what I'm saying? There's no even home phones. Mm. You have to put in work. <laughs> well, here, listen. I wouldn't. I'm not mad at Monica, even if she was sleeping with three or four dudes in the neighborhood. Like that's not what really good for her. Yeah, great, great job, Monica. Knock him out, champ. Like I wasn't. <laughs> that that's not what really got me. Like if that's because that's what the story was building. It's yeah. it's what Andrea. The movie. It all kind of came to a climax for me when she cheated on this guy who's like busting his ass in the salt mines, Real. traveling from city to city, trying to provide for her so that she can stay at home. Cause she doesn't want to work. She made it clear. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. She wants and he's to like, go to the movies and go out. So he's like, I'm trying to get the money for the movies. He goes, you want to go to the she got a dress and didn't pay rent. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. She's a hoe. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> that's whole activity. She <laughs> bought a dress with the rent money. He pisses me off though. But what do you think the story was about? Because yeah, it, it's like an art. Like you know, yeah. whatever you see, what do you see, yeah. Jason? Not that you like. Oh, let me watch this movie. What's your right. outcome? Well, see, there's there's a lot of stuff going on. That's why, that's why this is a good movie for us all to talk about. Because, I mean, it's a Criterion film, which means it's like it's built. I mean, it's they they collected it for us to talk about it and break it down because there's layers to this thing. And there, there's a lot of stuff going on in her household. Like you said, there's, she's in a small little like one room sort of situation and she's 18 and she's like, I want to get out of here. And she's like this young girl and she, she sees a way out. But then poor Harry, Harry is that his Harry. name? Harry. Harry is trying to provide for her the best way that he can in his little 17, 18 year old mind. He's like, well, my uncle or dad has a boat. We can stay there for a while. All right, I'll find us an apartment and I'll go work for us. But then like she's miserable. And she's unhappy. And so she's just kind of reverting back to like messing with these dudes or whatever. And for me, I guess I, I kind of put myself in Harry's perspective watching this because I'm like, when, when Harry went outside and he was like kind of, well, when he saw them in the room and, he, and the guy came out and he was like so embarrassed, he ducked behind the car. That's when like mm-hmm. it got real for me. 
Because I'm like, this is awful for him. And the other dude saw him and kind of like smirked, which my qu- question is, and I'm not saying all Swedish people look alike, but was that the same guy that punched Harry that then got I have questions. and then tried have- to get the boat on fire? And right? Was that, yes. was, was that the same guy, right? Uh, yes. Law or Lel? Le- Lele. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. There was no bone in him. It looked like that's, the same yes. one. I have no, 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 no. Like, no. The same that guy. was the same. That was the same no. guy. See, no. that's why I don't like Monica. No. He put, he punched Harry's lights out, and he put his boat on fire, and then she slept with him again. Exactly. That's she it's like and, so. And, and, and then her, she said she was. She was about to kill him with the. Oh, that he was. Oh, that she was in love with him. That's what she said. She said she was in love she with him. She said she was, was in love. love. With him. That's what she cheated. What? But but she like, was about to kill him with the oil yeah. when he was in the water. And Harry's like, no, 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 let him be. Which I was like, oh, they're about to kill someone in the summer and just like burn his butt. Yeah. I was ready for that. I was like, go kill that guy. That bitch what, is crazy. Who, who what a great movie. Up? What a great idea for the movie. Who who wakes up? Yeah, nothing and really happened after this. He's camping and he sees a boat. And I guess his previous chick I was like, I'm gonna go into someone else's boat, throw shit around, catch it on fire. Because he was jealous, right? Yeah, but I mean, like, like yeah, that. The yeah. first thing he yelled at them when they went out to the movies, it was like, I was gonna kiss your boyfriend or get with your boyfriend. I was like, I was, like, I was confused. I was like, are you, bi- like, do you want yeah. to get with your guy? Like, are, is this like a homoerotic thing? I was so into it. And then later with the boat happened that they tried to light it on fire. I was like, okay, so. He's jealous. He's trying to get with the girl. Like, come on, get, I, I didn't. Yo, know, I was lost until the very end when the fire happened and so and uh huh and the sleeping around. All right, this so changed the whole movie for me. The whole movie is different just now. Me that it was I have no idea. Dude. Man, that's mm-hmm. a toxic thing when you're dating someone and then it's like, oh, I guess I was just the rebound guy or bro. Do you think they were dating before? Right, that's why. Well, he said he they had following them, huh? Because me thinking about it now, what if he was following them? Because that island, there was no one in that island, and then yeah. randomly he has his little TP. Uh, he had a TP and yeah. a canoe and a canoe. Just kidding, and then he just like waited, like oh yeah, like that shit was planned. I bet he was there for a couple like a, a whole day, just waiting for them to well, go he away. Was talking them outside of her place, and that's why. Dude's still like he goes and hides in the dark, and Harry's like, "Oh my god!" Like I gotta go, wham! Like out of nowhere, and it's like, "What are you doing?" Like I was like, "For the, Didn't they were in the pier, someone saw them in the pier, no, in the pier party." Didn't they? Somebody they said like, "Ah, oh, a friend saw me here, so maybe like somebody yeah. snitched on them." Like, "Oh, they're over here," so that's when they like the guy Lele, whatever his name is. Caught them and oh and really? There was, I'm there was, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. There was a little interaction like at the party or yeah, because everybody was saying sly shit about her. Like like maybe you know like to him they were saying like oh kind of like watch your girl or whatever type of thing or you're running around. Which again at that point doesn't mean she's a hoe. It's just like she's, you know, uh, you know. Back in the day, I believe they called it the the town bicycle, you know. But <laughs> it's whatever, you know. The town bicycle. She was yeah. a floozy. That's, uh, so, but I Harry was... was such a good, good guy. He was such a good guy to yeah. the team. That's what makes it painful. He did everything right. I thought he was gonna just act crazy and kill her. I'm like, what's gonna happen? Like, come home. I'm, I'm I gonna thought I you. like. It was a single dad at the end. At the very beginning, I honestly thought, but then, you know, it was because he was very uh, naive. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I thought he was gay. And I thought the dude was punching the guy because they had some kind of gay relationship. Mm -hmm. And And that's why he touched his butt. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, right. I'll, I'll, kiss your boyfriend. I'll kiss your boyfriend. Yeah, he, was like, he was like, I'll kiss your boyfriend. I was like, what? Grab that. Like, what? I missed that. Like, the the boyfriend. first interaction 
of them. Yes, too. the very yes. first interaction after they leave the cinema, mm -hmm. they um, como que se, ch se chocan, bump the, the, like the they bump into each other, and and he says like I'll kiss like I'll kiss your boyfriend like trying to steal like steal your girl. I was like, but that came out wrong. So I was like. Do you want with him or do you want with her? Like, are you bi? Like, I was like questioning sexuality. I I thought it was that kind of film. Was he suggesting and then, that like Harry was like a feminine or like a punk? So I, I like he's the girl. Grabbed I'll like, his, I'll, like grabbed his ass, and grabbed like his jacket. Yeah. I think that's like some unresolved sexuality, like inner como que questioning, like. Do I like men or like why yeah, do I yeah. feel this Back like in the fifties? Like, uh huh. So it's come okay. I I could totally see that that the, when you said that th this is maybe like a director's experience, maybe the director is questioning his own sexuality. Like, I find this man attractive, and I'm like, intimidated by that. And then like I want his girl because I want to be near this guy. I don't know some because crazy, he like, he got his butt, and he said maybe your boyfriend and I could be a match. Hmm something about match so and then he just walked away i feel like they leave us tiny little drops of different thoughts mm -hmm. i i actually remember exactly i actually remember exactly what it was said and it was <laughs> yes. yes that was it that was perfect yeah. swedish and, or whatever uh, th this was actually a novel uh i <laughs> i saw um uh on the criterion channel they had a kind of a, some interviews and there was one interview with igram Igmar. 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 right i guess before he's died before he's died before he died and uh he he was talking about how he was friends with his author and uh yeah and then no one wanted to do the movie because they were like, this is too scandalous. Mm. You know, even yeah, even scandalous. in Sweden, it was like, so he said that almost yeah. immediately, like he was like, we can do it really cheap. And that kind of goes back to what we were talking before, kind of like something like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where one of the ways that they got it like approved was like, we can do this really cheap. It's not going to cost anything. So he said once mm -hmm. it was kind of approved, they just went to the island. They were like, let's grab the actors and let's just go and start filming and, and then when we come back we're gonna finish it but it was almost like let's go and do this part before the studio maybe like starts to see what we're doing and it's like okay. uh, yeah so that so it's from another perspective i will say not all the blame can be on monica because essentially monica is who monica is and Harry probably should have saw through that. You know, he, I think he just wanted to sort of be in love, you know, regardless of who it was. Because, you know, he gets Monica pregnant. And I'm sure they didn't plan the pregnancy. But also they didn't plan the marriage. You know, they were sort of forced into that marriage at a young oh, age. Oh, she was talking They about didn't plan that. anything. They didn't communicate at she, all. She, she, she but she did bring up marriage. Those are, are we really going to blame this on Harry? Are we this? No, 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 I'm not blaming it on Harry. It's equal like, part. It's they, equal part. I understand yeah, where, I, where Monica's coming from, but come I on, kind Harry, of, I, not no, a bad no, no, guy. I, kind, I kind of believe it's equal parts because his mom died really young, so he well, doesn't, doesn't, listen, doesn't grow up. Anybody, anybody that will watch the movie and see the play-by-play, -play, we can see that the level of risk <laughs> that Monica had over Harry was immaculate. No. Right, but well, but, she I'm, had no privacy at all. At eighteen, right. she was sleeping right next to everybody. Right, but but I'm just I'm oh. also just saying like he his mom died when he was like five or whatever, and his dad kind of went off the cliff at that point. So he never also saw a healthy like relationship between a man and a woman. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying like I'm not saying like oh he deserved it or whatever, but they were young and he had no. Uh, frame point of reference. Here he got put into a weird situation. This guy was just trying to have yeah. a cigarette in his lunch. Also, to the ladies, have you ever gotten stockings as like I don't know, second date, third date stockings <laughs> as a as a gift? Is that a thing? Are, are people still like down for that? I no. mean, I'm down for cool fun socks 
but not <laughs> the, the, the socks. That is so cool fun stuff. Yes. Hey, women are into this, man. Hosiery is an <laughs> ideal gift for day two. Bring it on. <laughs> yes, you can still get this. Good set of fishnets. <laughs> it depends, weird, it depends on the uh, profession. No, stockings, never. Y'all can, uh, we can get lingerie, some jewelry, shoes, but all stockings, no. Talking. But um, also, I think it was big back then. To the stocking point, stockings were like a big deal because they were hard to get. Not only no, well, not only that because women weren't shaving their legs yet. It wasn't they, until World War II that women kind of started shaving because at that point, silk and all that material got uh, taken to do the parachutes and all the different. This is things. post-war, though. It is. Yeah, this is 1953. So. Okay. I, Okay, so maybe stock. Well, that would make sense. Why he doesn't make enough money? So why she expect like that's what she expects him to have like a house, like to be able to take care of a kid. Like where, like where do you think the money comes from, babe? But remember like, when she <laughs> went to the house, how impressed she was. Yeah. She goes, "Wow, you guys have the type of house that I want to yeah. have." Yeah, exactly. And you're like, you're like, be careful. That's trouble. Like, oh, look at this house. Like, picking up the vase and stuff like that. Like, I'd like to it's, live in a place like this someday. Yeah. So she's very nice. Kind of like sinking her claws in a little bit. Yeah, I what? wanted to like slap her and just shake her and be like, woman up. <laughs> Everyone. You know, woman up. <laughs> she was she like, want. at some point, I didn't want to be like, she wanted it. But then she like tells him like, oh, you want to slap me, right? And I'm like, is that like a taunting oh, I didn't thing? See that. What? Wait. I, she 100% said, like, you're going to beat me, right? Like, basically, she was oh, like, yeah. you got to hit me. So that end. was her trauma coming back up. That yeah. was her, like, relieving her trauma with her dad. So, like, that's that's what I'm saying that she is like, she repeats her cycles, like, from her yes. household. She they, doesn't know how to manage it. So, come like, okay. And then the other dude just wants to love and they're in infatuation and their sex is like the the bond that they have together to to keep like doing this like living like survivalist mode like yeah, i was like fantasy like yes it's to escape into this fantasy that they're all alone and they want to live together forever it's like it's not based in reality or like in what can and be also actually i'm very woke she is mm -hmm. not woke at all because she didn't talk to anybody back then either. And it just stresses me out that girls out there were wilding out and acting out because they didn't, act, they didn't talk to anybody. Yeah. What do you mean they didn't with. talk to anybody? I, I'm, I don't follow. For help, right? Is that what you're saying? For help, like, yeah. To, for guidance. And... She didn't have anybody to guide her. Right. For her to look up to. She just looked up to the upgrade upbringing that she had but yeah that's about it i don't think they had any guidance i right. think their guidance was the 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 minister and and the mom who said yeah. like yeah. this is what you have to do because that's the what aunt. we did and yeah. the aunt and the aunt that then yeah. she is like you don't want to take through. care of the baby and, and she's like she's complaining about it not being tidy it's like what do you want <laughs> so by the time they're married monica's like full-on miserable at this point Right, mm -hmm. and, and what she expected. yes, not what she expected, even though now she has what she wants. Right, she has mm -hmm. this guy who's providing for wanted. her that she thought she wanted. She's away from her house, she has her own place, and she's more miserable than ever. You That's see, she's I gotta looking give it. for that love again, but she can't yeah. go to her family and ask for, like, oh, let's just catch up on a Sunday morning. I, she can't do that. So, I, the way that she knows is buying a new dress and lighting up a match and connecting with someone because she yeah. was lonely as fuck. And staring down the Oops. camera, which was amazing, which apparently was also she like, just kept going. You, you don't really stare at the camera now unless it's usually a break of the fourth wall and usually in comedies. But even back then, I also saw an interview with the, with the actress and she was like, that was crazy. She was like, yeah, was like, what are we like? just wild and then she was talking about seeing the movie i guess it was like 50 years after and she's like i was staring at myself like watching this movie oh, and wow. just thinking what am i thinking she was it like it was a long know. time too man it yeah. was a good like well, 15 yeah. seconds she's 91 years old the actress 
Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Is Joe alive? A, a little background though, so because in the, Bergman talks about like he saw her in a, like a cabaret setting and she was like dancing and singing with like a negligee and like uh, uh, stockings or whatever and then ended up casting her and uh, after the movie then she in my interview uh, oh he even said like I fell in love with her and he was married and older uh, very Hollywood at that point because she said after the movie was uh, wrapped he's like oh you want to go back to my place and have some tea and she's like yeah and she was like he like at one point like went and did like this super shy kiss she's like what the hell are you doing you've never kissed before and just like i guess grabbed him and like made out and then i guess he left his wife and they were together for... so he married her no they didn't marry they were together they did eight films together after this and she said one of the films Hollywood. One of the films, mm -hmm. they were, I think, together seven years or something like that. But one of the films they did, he wrote right after that. And she, she was like, then I watched it. And it was about their relationship because then he wanted to get back together with his first wife. Mm. So then he left her and tried to get back together with his previous wife. And the previous <laughs> wife was just like, no. <laughs> he was married like five times. Is this years. Janice's film or is Vern's film industry? Janice picked it up. No, or... what's the um, the um, couple from? Because they created this movie, right? They produced this movie? In Sweden, you mean? Yeah. Are you talking about the people that created this movie? Yeah. The director yeah, yeah, yeah. and the actress. Oh, director and actress. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never mind. I thought it was the production itself. No, no, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. But well, that, that's mean... a little background of just kind of like the... the... So what time period was this movie made when... In this the scandal of being 50, together. This, this, was, was this, is their, this, this is their first. Yeah. Okay. This is their first? Okay. This is their first film. And listen, I'm going to tell you guys, I, I want to know what you guys think about the performances, but I mean, Monica kind of eats this thing up. Like the, the actress who plays her, I thought she was terrific. I thought he was, yeah, like, like they're in the island and stuff like that. And they were both great, I think. And like he's just like realizing what he's in and like, ready for it and just like i'll do it and at the end it's kind of like the dad single father every time she lit up a cigarette i thought she was like the female james dean i thought she was cool as hell because like when she's laying in her bed at night or in the morning in her first in her first reaction when she wakes up in the morning her first thing is to light up a cigarette with their parents i'm like you are either the ultimate rebel and you just don't give a fuck. You they didn't give a fuck either. Yeah. Not yeah. only no, that, bring, bring me, bring me a, a match. Or no, br bring me a cigarette to live. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like, get up, get your own cigarette. She was a baddie, though. She was yeah. a baddie. She was a baddie. No, she had some she was a daredevil. Okay, did anyone get... Uh, is, it, uh, uh, is it 300 Days of Summer vibes? Hmm. Or 500 Days of Summer? How much is it? The, it's, it's 500 days. Yeah, a little bit. Because it's very much bit. like she knows kind of what she wants, but she, that doesn't really want the emotional connection. And then kind of the fact that she's kind of like, I'm, you know, like, only that in that so is kind of ahead of time. You don't want to be with me type of thing. Whereas in this one, she kind of wants to get out of it, but is in the controlling and kind of, you know, is ready to move on when she's ready to move on. So do you think... Do you think Monica knew that she wanted to like be with this guy, or was she thinking just summer fling? This is in the moment. You know, I was thinking about that. I think that because he went with it, and they actually got together in a crucial moment of her because she ran away and he was there. That she was like, "Well, you're all I got now, basically." But he was just—he just, just that. happened to be there. That's what she, she, she would have done that with another attractive guy, or she might have already tried to do that. But there was other guys, though. Remember, there was other guys hitting on her, and she was like, no, nah, it's hairy time, baby. Yeah. I think it was the right person right time. Oh, my God. He, they, were, they went to the bar together. He casually este, went with the conversation that she had. 
he seemed willing and she was like okay i'll jump on this train and don't look back and i don't think she gave it much thought there's a lot of gold digging women on the 50s because they couldn't really work or make the money that the man would and they're used to just take care of the house So there's a lot of gold diggers out there. So of course, like you gotta though. take care of yourself. You don't want to go back to the you, life if, that you had before. If people But her, she wanted money. And... She wanted love. She wanted love. Yeah. She, it, she, she, that was her her thing. She wanted love. She wanted a family. She wasn't using him for money. I she, think, was I, in, I, she was materialistic. She was very materialistic. I think she really well, tried. I think she really kind of wanted to give it a try, like. It's one of those when you're young and kind of, I got a little bit of the graduate vibe as well, kind of at the end of the graduate when they're also just staring right in the camera and no, they don't really know what's going to happen, but they know yeah. like, they're now in this ride. I think as a, when you're really young, I think you're just kind of like, you know, maybe this is what I want. And sometimes it's like, it's not right. It just so happens that it's like, well, when you have a baby and all that, it's a little different. And back. But would you want to work at a place where they're grabbing ass and stuff like that? No, I guess you're and right. I mean, they were like that way was, more aggressive. That, they were that, super that aggressive. was like up the skirt. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know? <laughs> and yeah. sadly, I'll mention this. Uh, when I was in Paraguay last year, I was out. Even with, I, I met this lawyer friend who became friends, and she was talking about that all the guys in the office have a WhatsApp group where they just rate the women in the office ass. And like, and she's like, I, I have the nicest ass, I guess. And that's a thing <laughs> where like they, the guys are taking pictures from like the women from behind from the ass and stuff like that. And they're so like in other, you know, clearly here, I'm sure it also happens, but it's a, the object objectification of it. So yeah, yeah. I wouldn't work there. I wouldn't want to be in, uh, like treated as a piece of ass basically. So I totally respect her at the, you know, I feel really bad for Harry though, because he was literally trying, <laughs> I feel like the hardest, you know, but so, but, but of her just being like, I don't want to get hit by my dad. I don't want to this, I'm going to go out and good for her of never going back to her, her family. Like that was not a good thing, but also like, you know, she treated Harry pretty, pretty shitty. Uh, you know. Then again, yeah, like that social, sociological damage that she yeah. has, she had. I, mm -hmm. You don't never know how you're going to react. And that's so messed up. Like, I can't even imagine working on that, on the 50s like that. That's so, like, nerve wracking, honestly. Not being hopeless, not being able to do anything and not defend your body. And... Yeah, yeah. She was still trying to be positive about the whole thing. But at the end of the day, she wasn't realistic. And she didn't want to be realistic because she, her reality wasn't a happy reality. So that's why she wanted to go and, and buy a dress. And why are you working all the time or studying all the time? Spend time with me and blah, blah. Like she needed that attention, that affection for her to just be more calm. She, she was like always wanted to be active though. Yeah. She went and danced on the weekend with him and then he's like, I know a better site. And then it was just the two of them dancing. Like he's like, this is just what I want. But she was like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. She was just like a fire. She was young. I mean, you know, that makes sense. She's a teenager. She wanted to be out. She wanted to hang out. They both just needed one good friend. To be like, this is not gonna work. Like, you have fun, you know, do what you're doing. They need one good friend to be like, dude, I've been around you two together. This isn't gonna work, man. You know, but Chris, no. that's a that's a great that's a great thing. If this movie was made today, they both would have had a friend to balance it out to counterpart them, and that didn't exist in this film. Yeah, not at and all. That, man. Yeah, although towards the end, in his new job. Like it's because they're like, oh, we need a new technician or whatever. Like I'll talk to the boss and you know what? And I'll say we like you. So I feel like he finally got that because even like he's like grinding metal. And then it's like, hey, just go. Like don't lose a finger today. Just go. Yeah. Go. He was such a proud dad. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he was so happy to be a dad. That him world. holding the baby in the mirror at the end. Getting up at night. So, oh, yeah, the the night. same mirror. Yes. The mirror look. I, I, it was kind of cringe though when he I named married the baby after her. Well, no, it was cute, but I mean, but I mean, but it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't a cute Monica. 
Oh, yeah. it was June Monica? Yeah, but he kept calling her Monica. But I believe yeah. it was June Monica. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, was like, kind of creepy, too. It was, I'm like, now she, he has a little mini Monica. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that was scary. She kept calling it Harry Jr. when I was still, you know, like, that's what I was going to be named. So I guess he was like, I don't know if that was in a respectful, respectful way or just his adoration of just like of Monica, where like, you are my life. And yeah. Yeah, he was just so quiet. There was something about him that I like, he never really exploded. Even when and he hits her, like, it's like, even him with a guy fighting was really weird. It's like it grab the like, person like, behind and go like this. Yeah. Hey, kind of, yeah. So it's like it's a 50. I'm sure. head down in the water so the guy didn't drown. Yeah. There were like a couple <laughs> like punches and I'm like, all right, those kind of would have connected Terrible. and hurt. But everything else was just kind of like, yeah. let's just listen. That's just that's just proof that we don't need a world star for white people. That's funny. Uh, the oh shit was um. Dude, oh. he was too nice. He had all the egoistic qualities of it all. He was just like very genuine. I'm here for love. I'm here yeah. for happiness. Yeah, it was I'm a good movie. Like, I'm, very we're, happy that now, now we're in it, you know, we're in it and like accepting what's given to you. And that's probably what he saw his dad, like lost the wife. And I was like, now I'm, I'm going to try, you know, what I can do it, I guess. I also think he didn't want to be like his dad because no. his dad came home and he was so sad. And it was just them and, and the sick. house was quiet and sick and his dad was in sick. And then he watched his mom go through whatever. Harry, I think, wanted somebody. He wanted a family. He wanted what he didn't have growing up. So he was dealing with trauma as well. Yeah. I love that dad, like, come in, and they're sitting there, and then it's like, uh, like, everything is so small. It's Everything is just, like, one bedroom apartment. So he's like, I guess I could just go sit in the kitchen. <laughs> and they were like, like, like teenagers. I love that moment, because, like, teenagers are like, yeah, let's get out of here. We're not happy yeah. to go here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I thought that was a good moment. No. Um, that was cute that they had each other, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In that moment, at least. And I also, if you want to get deep into things, too, like, his mom died. Yeah. So he had, he was helpless. He couldn't really, like, help his mom get better. And Monica being like, please do something. Please don't leave me out here. Like, he, he felt like, oh, let me take you in. I can help her. Mm. And that's how he really how she got him because yeah. like do you have this for me do you have like this and that oh yeah let's go to the movies like everything she was like always asking for things and he was there for it yeah he was even trying. like when she almost got arrested yeah she's a crazy kid she but ran out with the roast right that was a roast she was eating the roast. whole thing when i was like jealous i just wanted a roast at that moment i was like Dude, that roast was like in the mud, the dirt. She carried that shit everywhere. It was in the there ocean. There were moments where I thought like the movie was going to go away. Like I thought someone was going to die like half the time of the movie. I'm like, there's going to be an accident. I wanted somebody to die. I wanted somebody to die. <laughs> somebody needed to die. In that the, guy the, boat, <laughs> the guy burning the boat, I would have been like, kill that. You know, yeah. It Go. But but I I almost thought that when she got caught in the house that they were, like maybe it seemed like they kind of had their shit together that maybe they were gonna take her in and like maybe she was gonna you know like learn the ways and and kind of get a, a they were like you're about to be arrested sit down and have dinner at our house while you wait for the police to get here and yeah. like what was that other black and white movie we, we saw where the guy like psychopath just keeps following the kids down river and then they finally make it into that the hunter the hunter I did the and hunter they, you know and they they like stumble into that old lady's house that you know has a bunch of other kids living there i almost thought that it was going to be something mm. like that where this family would kind of take them in as like, okay, you young kids, like here, the, like figure it out. Mm -hmm. So uh, one thing that we usually cover is uh, box office and budget. I'm not able to find anything about the budget of how much this film costs to make. Mm -hmm. 
but it seems like upon its original release it made about fourteen thousand dollars but it says like portugal so I don't know, but and then it also says worldwide fourteen thousand, which I don't know. That's probably not even that good. It probably wasn't shown in the United States in its first run, man. It probably, no, 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 no. Know. So I shared some uh, posters on our group of this dude called Kroger Bab was a distributor, and I guess in the fifties, what they started doing uh, is they would they would get all these foreign films that either had like side boobs. Sorry. Or was just, just slightly, you know, a little too, you know, uh, sultry. And and the, and so they cut down the movie. They made it shorter. They added jazz music. And they and they dubbed it and gave her more of a sultry voice. So that's why it's like, uh, you know, it was, they, they sold it it's, as an explosion. You should have watched that. Yeah, I know. I'm like, so that's why... They called it in the U.S. Monica, the story of a bad girl. Showed them the poster. What? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that that's like, and they show her, you know, the painting of her like naked. That is. And and the guy bought the film, the distribution for ten thousand dollars, and uh, and wow. another movie that he was going around is called Mom and Dad, and they're saying that in in the forties, uh. That it made somewhere between forty and a hundred million dollars, and this is in the nineteen forties because they were just sending it around, and apparently they were even showing at cinemas. They were showing uh, venereal disease films that were made, and they just started putting them in cinemas. Anything that had any sort of sex in it, people were going kind of crazy uh, and just like. And so I guess that's how this movie first made it to the U.S. until Janice ended up actually buying the rights and they, and they basically made a deal with this dude that had it. And they were like, fine, give us another $10,000 and for four years you can continue showing the movie and then we'll... we'll... So it's a weird... I, I kind of want to see this dubbed version, especially if it's known as a period of like in the 50s of sexploitation films where they would just get anything foreign that that was kind of art house cinema or whatever and just like dubbing it and and making it sexy. Is that the American version? That's the American version. I bet it ends happy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like I'm guessing they took out the baby all that it's just her like looking at guys and like all the kind of sexual connotation like it's I probably it's called Summers in Monica. <laughs> I mean, you could cut out the baby yeah. scenes. You could cut that out. I mean, I think sure. if you cut yeah. those scenes out, yeah, it does maybe become like Monica the Bad Girl, the movie they're trying to sell. Yeah, there was also what was another? Um, of course. Uh, oh, so they they would promote films of that type as. A film for wide screens and broad minds. So it was all about like secu sexual sexualization and stuff like How that. How is it? Uh, a film for wide screens and broad minds. So just a way of like. I think that's opening, a good promotion yeah, though. Opening, for a movie like this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The long line. Yeah, the, people, they're not buying this. Like, like the, the Christian right would have no. came out and picketed this movie if, if it played in their town. Because that was already happening. Anyway. I'm sure you guys seen the main poster of the film. But look at the placement of the button. The placement yeah. of the button. Last week, when you showed the movie, I said, is that she naked? The placing of what? The button. The button. On oh, her the shirt. button. I thought you were saying the buttock. I'm like, what? <laughs> On, oh, on okay. you just walk past that. It just it looks like a nipple. Also, the other long line on the American poster. That's how, that's why they do it. Well, you know, do you know, no. do you know, like, do you know from what scene is that, right? That's the boat scene that you hated yeah. so much. No, 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 no. I, I, hated that one. I just hated the the long shots mm. that were taking like three minutes. Yeah, in the boat. Um, the other thing that it says is naughty and 19. Like, wait, look at that one. That was like, that's her naked. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, no, the other one. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's like the the butt shot. Yeah, it's the the like actual nudeness. And then they also had so daring. We recommend the babysitter. <laughs> men, men wilt under the touch of her lips, and I'm like, there's barely like anything. But I guess that was enough in the fifties to. Yeah, this movie's pretty risque for the fifties. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if anything before 1953 I can think of that was sort of this risque. In the interviews, they talked about a, a, a couple previous like Swedish films that came out that had actual a little more. Uh, oh, the, the actress even said like this movie came out and they shall both her breasts. <laughs> like that was the interesting <laughs> cabaret sing a uh, dancer, no? Huh? She the she, main she, actress. She did like. I, I I imagine it's cabaret. They said it was. It's a theater that did like some kind of sketches and like fun song and dance, which to me sounds yeah like cabaret. Dude, how, how about the scene where he takes off her? She takes off her shirt, and he's like, "I'm gonna start at the shoulders, though. I don't know what I'm supposed to touch." And then he's like slowly going down her arms, and I was like, "Oh, this dude's like 14." Well, yeah, in, in Sweden, in Stockholm, yeah, he would be 14. He doesn't know anything. Well, yeah, that was funny. Oh, man, yeah. I, I was know. trying to look up uh, and see if there was a lot of, like, breast movies out there in the 50s. And I feel like that's when it started getting popular. But, uh, careful searching that on my breast. <laughs> oh, oh, no, right? Let's see. I mean, and there's also, there's a butt in this movie, too. I don't know if there's a lot of butts in movies. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, really nudity. Not full frontal, yeah, but nudity. full backal nudity. It's like a porno with a plot. It's a nice porno with a plot. So yeah, nice you can see like some great ass and some butt. Very subtle. You don't see any anything vulgar. Yeah, Everything's very tasteful. It is tasteful. In the interview with her, they even asked like, oh, you go and you pee behind the tree. Like, was that in the script? And she's like, no, but we're out there. And it's like, you wake up and you go to the bathroom. So I was like, I guess I should just go and be in the tree because where else are you going to, you know, where else are you going to do that? And she even right. talked about the nudity. And she was like, I don't have that much of an issue uh, doing the nude scene because, again, we were in that island. So there weren't really people around. And she was like, there was like three people in the crew. And they were like uh, electrician and like the camera guy and the like actor and the director. It was like they'd all seen stuff before, so she was like, it was, "Did you, know. you say what year this movie came to the states?" No, but I, in the fifties. Okay, mean, so it's still in the fifties. Yeah, a, a year or two after it came out, I think. Okay. Wow. All right. They really jumped on it. So is there anything else that you guys want to cover? Uh, we covered a lot about the plot. I think we did pretty good on that. Um, is there anything technically you guys want to cover? I know um, somebody mentioned something about, you mentioned something about cinematography and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I'm going to say this, because I know, Chris, I know you disagree with me about the acting in this thing, but I just thought the acting was like really raw. And I, I felt it like, maybe I felt it was real because I, I didn't speak their language. But it just felt like it was all in their eyes and in their face. And I just I thought Monica was really sensational, man. I, I like her beats. Yeah, really good beats. Yeah. I thought she was great towards the end. I felt like at the beginning that everybody kind of struggled to get it together. And like the, uh, the fight scenes really threw me out of the when I was in the movie and I was getting into it. The fight scenes were rough. You know, like didn't spend a whole lot of time on making sure that all, you know. Um and, and the kissing at first was like very forced. Like yeah. when he kissed her, it was like very, and then it'll push away and like, oh, that was awesome. That was so amazing, you know? Like, um, so there was some of that stuff at the beginning, but then I felt like once they got more comfortable with each other, it got better as the movie went on if it was shot sequentially or chronologically. Yeah. Just Yo, in Hollywood. Most yeah. 50s kisses? Yeah. What? That's not kissing at all. They don't even like at the end, just like. <laughs> Kissing, ha, ha, ha. kissing Thank like you. side like, to side what, in the cheek. Why would they do that? Like it's easier to kiss than like slobber all over. It's 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 weird because I was thinking like I need to see more risque nineteen fifties movies. Kind of like because I was like, is this it's what extreme. is this literally how people showed affection, yeah. or is it more like for cinema, right? Because there were so many rules, especially in the U.S. 
you know, that whole conservative agenda that then they put all the rules of what you could show in in a film. So I'm like, let me see some other Swedish films from the 50s to see if it was just him being extra awkward or if that's just what... I don't remember the kiss. Was it... You guys say it was an awkward kiss. What? what, what it was not a pet. It was a little it was, bit like this. Don't. <laughs> The first time they kissed was like a pet. It's when he already knew she was pregnant and they were by the fire. Um, oh, never mind, never mind. It was the kids when they're drinking and after she's pregnant, she's like, great, she's drinking while she's pregnant, I guess. Um, they, were, they were drinking slobbery and then like she spit on his face, remember? And then they got into sex after. Yeah. Oh, spit on his face? Yeah, spit and alcohol that. back at him. She like spit alcohol back at him because then did I watch laugh? The <laughs> guys? I don't remember that either. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was yeah. after they built the fire and they get cozy in the rock. She's like, I think she's, I'm think I'm pregnant. The day after, they're like drinking a whole big bottle. It's like, oh. I'm where do you think? Where do you huh? think she learned that? Where do you think she learned that at? <laughs> you think she's a hoe? <laughs> at home. Steve, right? <laughs> Going back. Oh, I don't know. Not from a good man. It sucks. Not, not, from, good man. not from a YouTube video. I think she There's was. There's no YouTube. She was very sexually. She active. couldn't even use her mouth or anything. I in mean, her uh, own. Yo, in 53, she was on it. So I was. I was, oh, yeah. I was wondering was. this. And I was like, until she kind of says, oh, I'm tubby. <laughs> like, and I'm like, okay, they had sex. But I'm like, have they had sex yet? Because it was like, the, they barely kiss. And then I was, mm-hmm. he's like, my dad's yeah. out with the boys fishing. I was like, Ooh, come over and have dinner. I think I the like, first time was in the island. I don't think they had sex prior to that. What if, what if it wasn't even Harry's baby? Oh. Yo, they've been in the island for a while. Man, he's what if take that girl up. was going to the guy on the tiki tippy tent? You don't think she was sending that? You don't think she was sending pigeon letters to the, her lovers? No, I, I mean, she, I probably st- she's wild. Like I that. figured they were there the whole summer. Oh. Summer with Monica. Yeah. I figured they just were. Yeah, they ran out of money together. I they still can't believe that hopefully it is. Is the same person with the TP and everything. I can't. I didn't get that at all. I thought those were different dudes the whole time. I think it was the same one. It was, it was, it was the same one. I'm sure it was him too. So, too. I mean, I'll take you guys' word for it. I, didn't, I, I thought mean, they were all different dudes, yeah. to being honest. I mean, it looked like the same person, but he didn't even say anything like, why are you keep fucking with me? Or like, why are you messing with me? Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. He didn't say anything back to him. He just kind of fought with him. And then he just picked up his stuff and put it on the boat and like left. <laughs> we were like making out. I'm like, it's just the yeah. I was confused. Okay, it was- well, uh, let's uh, let's jump into final thoughts here, um, because the the ladies aren't used to being here. Why don't the guys go first, and so you guys can see how we do it? But the format- no chivalry in this one, none. Huh? <laughs> no chivalry. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'll let kidding. the ladies go last, just so, right, no chivalry, just so they can see how we sort of do it, our final thoughts. So, um, uh, Steve, why don't you go ahead and lead us off with final thoughts? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Final thoughts. I love it. Me first, could like a true gentleman. Um, final thoughts. This movie was definitely one that, again, like every movie, I didn't see a trailer. I didn't read anything about it. I just hit play and started watching and at the very beginning i would say the first maybe 12 15 minutes maybe uh are kind of like okay where is this going and then it's just there's a moment that it just takes you on a ride and you're in it and one thing that i really was intrigued like uh, i was watching it with andrea and like uh one of the things that I was very intrigued was uh, we were arguing about it was the age of them. Because Andrea was like, they are, she's acting like she's like 14 years old or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then it's not till like when they're getting married that they actually reveal that information. So I love that it took all that time to actually like get that uh, piece of information. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a very, I would say, bold 
film, especially for the 50s, uh, because it has a lot of layers uh, for this type of film. And uh, overall, I would recommend to people that are into heart-wrenching dramas, uh, people that like to follow along a story, and people that don't mind black and white films, because I know a lot of people are... They like their CGI's and their special effects, but this movie is definitely one for people that like to get into like a really cool drama. Uh, that's my final thoughts. Very cool. Okay, um, Dino, why don't you go ahead and give us your final thought? Nice. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, talking with everyone and kind of uh, breaking down the movie. I think it, it just opened so much more about this movie. You know, I will say for such a short film, I think this has to be closer to one of the shorter films we've done. It felt really long. It just took its time. I mean, there's a whole shot of a spider web and a, and a spider. And I'm like, is that supposed to be her? Is she like, caught you in my, in my spider web of blah, blah, blah type of thing? Yeah. And I don't know. I, don't, I doubt it. I, I've, at times I thought, like you said, the shots of the boats just kind of going. I'm like, uh, 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 like you get your first camera, right? And you're like, I just got to film. What does this do? Let me film. Let me film. Like that's how I felt throughout part of the movies where I'm like, oh, he, this is his first time with the camera, which clearly it wasn't. But it, it, it had that feeling. Um, as much as I ended up disliking Monica, I think it's a great film, especially for this time period, of showing a woman in a different role. You know, it's always like the ingenue. It was always kind of like a damsel in distress, right? Is this a gone with the wind? Those kind of things that especially in the U.S. was putting out. Like women were very much uh, I don't know, atypical. Not, no, atypical is the, the opposite, I believe. Typical. Yeah. <laughs> typical. Right? They were in the box. So I think this movie is great seeing like, a female character actually be something different, like kind of a, yeah, that you don't see until more recently in cinema when they're kind of like, oh yeah, women can actually be independent and, and be also, you know, crazy and, and ruin people's lives because, hey, that's, you know, she she's independent. And I, I think that's really cool. Um, and I think it was well acted overall. And, uh, yeah, again, really nice shots. And, yeah, who I would recommend it to, I guess, uh, Ber Bergman fans out there that might have not seen it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, this is a movie I would recommend. I don't know how I would bring it up. I think it would have to be one of those, someone mentioned something, and then I'd be like, oh, maybe you'd like this movie. That's my final thought. Would you watch it again? Uh, I think uh, Steve brought up a, a point. Like, I'm always down to possibly watching a movie, even if I don't necessarily w would want to, with other people. Sure. So, like, if it's showing at the New Beverly or something like that, right? If we, if it's somewhere that that there is going to be an audience, I was like, I'd love to go see that. Especially older movies, mm. I'm down to go to see them with people because it's an experience of how. You know, in today's society, uh, how how uh, we we take that in and and how people respond to it, right? right? So cool, uh, Professor. Why don't you grace like a movie? Call. A movie called Summer with Monica. This was a pretty dark movie for a movie called Summer with Monica. Uh, it was not at all what I was expecting. I was expecting possibly a musical. You know, uh, like somebody at the beach. Uh, I haven't looked at the movie posters. Um, I feel like this is a movie where I would sit and try and come up with like different comedic alternative names for it because Summer with Monica is just such a simple, you know, it sounds like something a studio was like, let's just call it Summer with Monica. I, I would imagine in Sweden, they probably are laughing that that's what we call it in America. It's probably, it probably doesn't have the same title. I would think anybody know that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't either, but I would imagine it's probably a little more imaginative. I would recommend this to an ex and I would like to watch it with them and be like, that was you. Remember you did that. Kind of stuff. <laughs> Cause, Cause you said at the beginning, man, you were like, 
this is 100% every bad relationship. And I was like, I was watching the frustrations of people who had been through different backgrounds in a relationship that I have seen before um, and probably lived through before at times. Uh, so for me, it was an interesting movie. I don't know that I would watch it again, but the one thing I'll say is a lot of times the process of us discussing a movie, a movie makes me like it a lot more than when I originally watched it. Um, hmm. uh, so this movie for me was definitely one of those. It was a movie where I feel like I, I got a lot more after talking it out. Great. Fantastic. All right. Well, I'll go real quick. Um, so I did really enjoy this movie and I'm going to tell you why it, it wasn't because of the subject matter so much or because I love the film, even though this is my third Bergman film and I've liked all of them. This is my least favorite, I think, of the ones I've seen. I've seen The Seventh Seal and Wild Strawberries, uh, but this was still good. Would I watch it again? Yes. I think under the same pretenses that Dino and Steve said, I would like to watch this with an audience, like in a theater. I kind of want to hear people's reactions as the movie plays out because I think that would be interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't, I don't need to watch this with any exes or anything like that. But uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, I feel like I already have. Uh would I, would I recommend it to someone? Yes. I would recommend it to people who like Criterion movies. I would recommend it to uh, Igmar Bergman fans. Um, and I would recommend it to people that I know might really like this subject matter. But I would not recommend it to like Andrew Tate fans because Ooh, yeah. they're going, they would have a field day with this thing. Uh, or maybe I would recommend it to them because it would help get their jollies off. Um, yeah, so that's my final thought on the movie. I did really enjoy it. And I actually do look forward to watching it again, uh, just for the pieces that you guys mentioned that I missed somehow, because I want to see that. Uh, so I might even go back and review those tonight. Um, so that's my final thought. Uh, Vito, why don't you go ahead and uh, grace us with your final thought? You're muted. Hello. Gotcha. Okay, so for me, this is a psychological movie. It's very, it's like art, you know, when you listen to, to, to music and, and it's a very creative, detailed, you have to be focused type of movie. It's very old, but I think it was it's very bold to do this type of movie. Um, this is a movie on what not to do in our relationship, basically. Everything that happened was so stressful as well. Like, just even her just going out with him and just saying, like, let up this match. And then all of a sudden, like, let's escape and live forever together. I'm like, there's something wrong with her. Mm. And there's something wrong with him, too. Because for him to just be okay with this whole thing, why? You know, it's very crazy. And, and... And it's and I thought that it was gonna be a movie that it was gonna be very fantasy and and not real because girls are not really like that. Like normally they don't really go to you and like, oh yeah, oh let's spend our whole lives together and blah blah. I'm like, this has to be like a happy go lucky movie. But I knew like it's not American movie. I was expecting like uh, a hit. And no, there was something definitely wrong with her just to be like that and, and for them as well, but they connected immediately. So seeing that connection between them was very interesting because they're yin and yang. They're so different people and different upbringings. And there's so many different movies in, in the industry in Hollywood that <clears throat> is about relationships and, oh, he's poor and she's rich or vice versa. And, they come together and they have this happy life and blah, blah. But they don't put up like all the things that they go through and what actually, you know, do you talk to people? Do you have friends? They didn't even have time to have friends. As you can see, like he was always late to work. He was always with grown up people. So he didn't have a mentor, not even his dad. His dad was always complaining as well or not around. And she as well, all the coworkers were men. And she was around male all, all the time. I don't, even the brothers, you know, there was no women around, just the mom. And that scene when the dad comes home and he's like, oh, it's our anniversary and everything. 
before that, she's just sitting around reading a book and the mom is just doing the laundry and it, they're not even talking to each other. So she didn't have nobody to look up to either, but it was, it was, it was nice to see the background of what happens, you know, in different, in different upbringings and different families and, and what can happen and how it can, they can collide and collapse at the same time. And also postpartum because it brings everything out. And, um, and it was a very deep movie. If I would recommend this movie, I think I would recommend it to people that like to see, I mean, I'm trying to remember this movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, was the, uh, don't get me, was the actress with, uh, that was in Titanic? Kate Blanchett or Kate Winslet? Kate Winslet. Oh, Revolutionary uh, yeah, Road. Yeah, so this movie, Revol Revolutionary Road. Yeah. People that like that movie should definitely watch this. Um, it's very intense and it's very raw. People that like to just see, like create the, the story for within themselves and um, like to figure out things and um, are not depressed. If you're depressed and it is hitting you hard, like don't watch this movie because <laughs> not yet. Yeah, I will watch it again though. I will definitely watch it again because I'm the type of person that I would recommend it to people that like uh, psychology. I love psychology, so is is there's a lot there's a lot of, a lot of layers. So yeah, very cool. Thank you for your final thought, uh, Andrea. Uh, take it away. What's your uh, final thought? Well, um, I think I think I think the characters were very complex. The human characters that had like good and bad characteristics and very balanced. That they were truly a hero or truly a villain. So I like that the main characters had that. I like the cinematography as well, and it was very interesting. Like they uh, that y'all have said, it, that it's very progressive film. I think for the time being, for being in I don't know if it's Swedish or or German at the the film. So I think. Swedish. So I think it's very progressive for being in the 50s and having all this conversation with um, abuse and um, uh, workplace harassment and teenage pregnancy and uh, the, all of these things. So it's very cool um, to be able to, to see this um, film. I would recommend it to people that are um, fans of black and white movies and like um, and don't like happy endings. So, yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, would you see it again? Uh, people, fans that are at the fans of, well, I'm like, you'll produce this shit. <laughs> um, fans of a black of black and white film and people that are, aren't fans of happy endings in, in film. I, 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 I didn't see it like a like a not happy ending. I saw it as for him, like recognizing, like looking at himself. Like I was almost like you got you 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 got rid of the problem, right? Like yeah. I didn't see it as a like it's not it's not that it was a happy ending, but it's not that it was a horrible ending because he's kind of like it's not square one, but he's just like. It's a real ending. It's yeah. a very realistic ending. Mm -hmm. I and have a question. You're gonna take it however you take it. Like it, it's not. Uh, it's neither or. That's it, the beauty of it. Yeah, because I like what you said, Andrea. Because they weren't even. One of them weren't the evil, and the other one, the good guy. They were just going through the, their waves. The yin and yang, the yin and yang, that they have a little bit of each other to balance each, each and other out. And personal problems. Yes. For sure. But they projected that. They projected that into their relationship. So come okay, they were they were a victim of their circumstance and it's like a realistic ending in that he ended up with the daughter and I don't know what happened to her. Like, we don't know what happened to her. She went to like I don't know. He's got a new suit, though. So, you know, go exactly. wear that suit. Getting, getting pregnant again, getting a new kid, going through the same thing. I think it was a happy ending for the kid. 
because being around a mom that doesn't want you just wants right. to be wild is yeah. not a good ending wow. yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of a lot of complex ideas in this thing chris you said you had a question just one question about the ending when he's like standing there with the ant at the very end and she's like arguing over the lamp. You know, she doesn't want her furniture to go too cheap. And he's like walking away from her and he's like, oh, thanks for all your help. And I was like, dude, you need her help more than ever, man. Like, why, who are you getting to help you now? <laughs> why are you him? He got a job. Like, he wanted to be an engineer or he was like, this is what I can be good at. It seems like he got he's that job. Need a nanny. He knows that no one's going to be taking rent money for dresses anymore. I think he's like, I'm, you know, like, this is, this is me now. I can do this. I, you know, that's how I thought, he's going right? to, he's going to have, he's going to need somebody to help him. Right. Right. Yeah. But, right. but just him knowing, I think like, we, we can, you know, we can move forward. Oh, one quick thing. I, I don't know if anyone caught the name of the boat. Right. But it's yeah. like, and, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like Nina, it's N-I-N-N-E. And what I looked online and I was trying to figure out the Swedish word, but one of the translations of it is kind of like yesterday. So I don't know if that was intentional of kind of like almost that idea of like we like uh, in Casablanca, or like we'll always have Paris. Like mm -hmm. like this was all yes, like the summer, right? The summer. That's how it ended. We can never go going back through the memories. Yeah, yeah. it totally yeah. did. That yeah. the ending when he's like going back through his mind of the when summer. When he creepy, right. he looked at himself so creepy. Like he's never looked at himself in yeah. a long time. He just looked at the mirror and just went through the memories. But well, he looked so mirror. creepy. I thought he was going to do something crazy. Because he was shaving with a tiny mirror <laughs> in the island. So I feel like that's the first time. He looked at like a big mirror and could like see himself where he ended, right? And maybe right. when you are in love and you are in that moment, you can see all the, you know, all the bad things or or is this a healthy relationship type of thing? Because, you know, love, like we can get through these. We can get, and sometimes, you know, like imagine also in the 50s and him recognizing like we need a divorce. This is not like, what? Like in the fifties, being open about like let's get a divorce, yeah. like that's, yeah. that's good big. for him though. Yeah, yeah. he recognized that he was, was toxic. Huh? That he recognized that she was being toxic. <laughs> that's me, like, yeah. and for like her, I, think, I think she just wanted to be free. She just didn't want to be tied down. I think that's what I came down with uh, with her. Maybe I'm oversimplifying it. Because she did have trauma, past trauma, like all that uh, with it, and then the postpartum. And, and she but, was young, and she should be free. Yeah. And, the, you know, mm -hmm. you, I think that was part of it. Like, she didn't want to be tied down with the parents and the brothers and everything. And, yeah. So, I, I'm and not I like, like how the whole story started with her and ended with him. It was definitely a bookend, wasn't it? Or, yeah. Or little Monica, right? I was like, I still exactly. Like, well, it started we were, with old men we were, into that bar or whatever, and then at the end, the old men were going into the bar again. Yeah, the guys that were the junk dudes, or yeah. you know, like taking it. Man, they were haggling. Man, they were like, oh, they, <laughs> they were. Haggling. One of them was passed yeah. out, but just still standing. Yeah. So I do have one more question. Uh, after all these final thoughts, and uh, that question is, uh, Steve. What do you got for us next week? Next week, I am so happy you asked me uh, because it is my turn uh, for Cinema Club. Ooh. And, you know, at first I wanted Andrea to actually pick the movie, but she was like, no, I don't know. So I'm like, it's <laughs> fine. It's you're fine. Dumb. But now you're I want dumb. to leave it. I want to leave it to all to you guys to vote for the next movie. Okay. Uh, I have two selections. Either a movie that's from this year and I haven't seen yet, aka a Charlie movie. Day's oh. Fool's Paradise. Okay. Or we can go back in time to a time where this guy was king and he had this incredible release called Oh, Woo! I, that's one of my favorite wow. movies too. I never seen so, the other one. 
so hard. Number one is Fool's Paradise, Charlie Day. Number two, Badasso. Number two. No. Oh, I thought that was the whale. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. You guys ready? All right, we're gonna vote in three, two, one. Oh, oh. My bad. I know. I, I did it. The I ones have I've it. never seen it. I haven't seen that one. I don't know like what it is, and I like the yellow. But Dazzle is it, though. It's an incredible yeah. movie, but yeah. I, I saw Full Paradise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire Professor for Fire Professor for El Dondino, Jason Echoes for Vero, Andrea and Steve. We'll catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.